Hello everyone. Welcome to the video on how to crack the LR section of IPM Rotak. My name is Alpesh and I'm going to help you to crack the LR section of Rotak. Before we start with this, let us look at the agenda for the video. The first thing that we are going to look at is the pattern of LR section. Then we will look at different types of questions that you will be looking out for in LR section. And finally, we will have a strategy and the preparation plan for the LR section. So, if I look at logical reasoning section of the Rothak test, this is the distribution of questions from the last year Rothak test. This is an approximate, okay? More or less, there will be some questions. So maybe, you know, you will get more of a coding, decoding, a little lesser of blood relation. A small minor deviations can happen within the topics. But majorly over the years, this is the distribution that has been observed. So if you check, you get four questions of blood relations, a couple of questions on coding decoding, one question on series completion, two questions on directions. You get 15 questions on arrangement. So there are various kinds of arrangements. So you get three sets on one on linear arrangement, one on circular arrangement, one on matrix arrangement. And there are five questions in each of the sets. Okay, then you get data sufficiency, you get con quantitative comparisons, silogs, strengthening, weakening, conclusion, assumption, cause and effect. These are all verbal reasoning questions. So out of 40 questions of logical reasoning, there are 9 questions on verbal reasoning. Now, remember there are 40 questions on LR section. On an average, I would suggest if you can spend around 40 minutes for the LR section, that should be sufficient. The type of questions that you get in LR in IPM Rotak are relatively easier. Okay, so if you are looking at cracking this section, I am assuming you should be solving anywhere around 35 or more than 35 questions. Okay, now what have I done? I have divided the different types of logical reasoning questions into three sections. One is visual reasoning. The second type of questions are verbal reasoning. And the third type of questions are analytical reasoning. Let us look at visual reasoning questions first. So these are the various topics that you get under visual reasoning. You will get a question on finding water image or mirror image. You will get a question, five figures are given. One of them is not following the logic and hence will be an odd man out. You will get a question wherein four figures are given. You need to find the fifth figure or two figures given, middle figure missing. Again, two figures given. You know, these are the types of questions that you will get in series completion. Then you will have paper folding. So a paper is folded. The way the paper is folded is given to us. And then they will give a small cut in the paper. Now, if I open up the paper, how will it look like? You know, these are the types of questions that you get in visual reasoning. So my simple suggestion is solve minimum of 20 questions of this type. If you solve minimum 20 questions of this type, what would happen is you will get various types of questions. So what are the different types of questions that you get in odd man out? You know, you will come across all those types of questions in odd man out. Okay. Then once you are done with that, solve the benchmarking tests. Now, if you solve the benchmarking test, you will get confidence in that particular area because the benchmarking tests are designed topic wise. Okay. These are the different visual reasoning types of questions. Now, let's look at the different verbal reasoning types of questions. So, as you can see, you have statement and assumption. You have statement and arguments. You have statement and conclusions. You have statement and course of action. You have statement and inference. And you have syllogisms. Weightage is approximately 9 to 10 questions out of 40 is what you can expect here. Now, one thing to be remembered as far as verbal reasoning questions are concerned, this type of questions are low accuracy types of questions. Okay, so what I want you to do is solve a minimum of 40 questions from each of these topics that I have listed down here. If you can solve 40 questions of each type, you will get an idea on how to tackle such type of questions. Okay, so let's say I started solving statement and conclusion types of questions. Can you solve the benchmarking test on statement and conclusion? 
So once I solve sufficient questions of one type, once I get a hang of those type of questions, move on to the second type of questions and so on. So this was the second topic which was verbal reasoning. And the third type of questions that we get is analytical reasoning which I am sure most of us are aware of. So the type of questions that we get here is blood relations, coding decoding, questions on directions, questions on arrangement, series completion, data sufficiency, data comparison, clocks and calendars and DI is also a part of this. Now again if you see this type of questions are relatively easier. So what is my expectation? Can I solve 40 questions of each type? So say for example if I pick up blood relation, can I solve 40 questions of blood relations? So I am sure then you will cover all the different types of questions there. Under blood relations, you get set questions. That means a passage is given followed by three, four or five questions. You get individual questions like pointing to a man. Rajesh said that, you know, this type of questions. Or you also get symbol based questions under family tree. So if you solve around 40 questions, I'm sure you will get varieties of questions. And then again, you will know how to tackle such type of questions. Okay. When you come to arrangement type of questions, or even a DI type of questions. Let's look at arrangement first. Let's say I have linear arrangement. Can I solve around 10 sets, a minimum 10 sets of linear arrangement questions, 10 sets of circular arrangement questions, 10 sets of matrix arrangement questions. This is what I'm looking at. In DI, basically, can I pick up 10 sets of line graph? Can I pick up 10 sets of tabular data? Can I pick up 10 sets of bar charts and so on? So this is what I'm looking at doing. If you can practice minimum of 10 sets of this area, you will get a good hang of this type of questions. So let's look at special pointers. As I said, the type of questions that you get in LR are relatively easier. And once you solve around 40 questions of each type, you will get used to the different types of questions that are coming in the test. My simple suggestion to you would be, since my analytical reasoning types of questions are relatively easier, start preparing them first. Once you are done with those type of questions, then you can start preparing visual reasoning questions. And once you are done with visual reasoning questions, start with the non-verbal reasoning questions. This is what I am looking at. Now, once you have cleared the concepts, once you have done around 30-40 questions of each area, then move on to uh, practice exercises, solve as many questions as you can. Make sure you solve not only easy questions, but also solve mid-level of questions, a medium level difficulty questions. Yes, in Rotak, the questions are relatively easier, but still, you know, just in case if the test or if the questions become difficult, then I should be able to solve it. Hence, solve from easy to medium level of questions. Again, while taking a test, start taking test, I would suggest start once you are cleared with your concept, see if you can solve questions in a time limit. So in a time limit, let's say pick up five sets, start solving them. Five sets is let's assume 25 questions. Give yourself 20 minutes for that 25 questions and start solving them. In that 20 minutes, maybe you will not be able to solve all the questions. So after the time limit, make sure that you solve each and every question then. Practice as much questions as you can. In logical reasoning, there is no substitute to practice. The more you practice, the more you will become strong in that. So once you have revised and revisited all the question types, then start solving the uh, practice test. That's what I was suggesting earlier also. Okay, the more you practice, the more you will get stronger in those type of questions. And once you have done with the LR, or look studying various types of logical reasoning questions, then once you start with your JIP mocks, I'm sure that uh, you know you will be in a better position to tackle the LR section. I hope this video helps you in your preparation. All the best for the test.